Hey guys, thanks for your patience. It's been a while since I've got my last video out and I haven't done much about design lately and so now we're going to get to that. The reason why it's been a while is I've been working on these and it's going to be the focal point of a new series I'm starting. It's going to be a five video series or thereabouts. It may change as we go. Um, this first video is me building these. That's the one you're watching now. So in a minute here, we're just going to go through what I do and how I come to this part of the build. And then we're going to, part two is probably going to be split up into two pieces. 2A is going to be measuring the woofer and 2B is going to be measuring the tweeter. And like all my testing videos of drivers, I'm going to upload the files to Dropbox for you guys to download. And then part three, I'm going to look at how to take the files for this particular speaker, introduce them into a program like XSIM. I'm going to use XSIM, but you could use other programs as well. Uh, how to set it up for acoustic offset and things like that. And, and the specific design goals that we're going to try to achieve for these, because these are going to be used um, in a desktop environment. In part four, we're going to look at my crossover design um, that I come with, up with. We're going to measure it, see how it worked out. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm hearing. And I would also encourage people to email me their crossover designs. And in that part four, I will hook them up, measure them, and see what you get. That'll be in part four. And then in part five, you know, we'll see how things go. But I imagine it'll be um, a final assembly video, uh, final results video with all the measurements. I'll get all the different off-axis measurements and stuff like that and possibly talk about if this turns out good, talk about sharing the crossover with you guys uh, to be able to use in your own builds. Okay, without further ado, let's build these things. Okay, for this build, I'm gonna use what I call a sandwich box construction. Um, if you don't have to worry about MDF seams, to me, this is the easiest way to build a box. It's basically build the sides, top and bottom, and all the bracing all at once, and then sandwich it together with the back and baffle. So uh, here I am basically making rip cuts and cross cuts to get all the pieces I need. You can see in real time how fast this cross cut sled works. It's really convenient. I have a stop there. That C clamp on uh, on the cross cut sled is working as a stop. I should note that I actually have two baffle pieces I have to make. I'm making the baffles out of 3 8 Baltic Birch and quarter inch MDF. Here I am cutting out the holes for the woofer in the brace, um, which in the end I actually kind of screwed up. I fit test it here. The brace isn't going to be exactly centered on the woofer and the spokes on the frame of the woofer actually ended up getting in the way. So I had to, I really butchered this brace. I forgot to put breathing holes in it and everything. So I had to really butcher it after the fact. Here I am assembling it because I'm going to use some leftover laminate from a previous video. So I'm not worrying about nail holes or seams or any of that stuff. So I can get a little bit um, crazy, but you'll notice I keep all one side registered against the table and that's going to be the baffle side um, that keeps everything perfectly flush and any little inconsistencies in inconsistencies i have in the cuts will stay towards the back here i am in real time showing you um, operating the nail gun i do go slow and take my time and always make sure my fingers are clear I had to be really careful nailing the brace because the brace is just 3 8 Baltic birch. The rest of this I've made out of half inch MDF. I figure I can get away with such a thin material because the boxes are so small. And that's another reason why I figure I can get away with one brace. Notice how I set the pin and then move my hand out of the way right before pulling the trigger. That's super important. <laughs> I have had stray nails uh, run out of the wood and not get me, thankfully, but it can happen. And here I am attaching the first piece of the baffle. This is the 3 8 Baltic Birch going on, and now is the quarter inch MDF. Um, I don't, I nail, I nail the quarter inch MDF just to keep it from sliding around. Uh, just a couple nails here and there, but I clamp it because I need pressure in the middle of the baffle to sandwich the baffles together. So that's what I'm doing here. And here's the other box. Quickly put on that baffle as well. 
So now both boxes have their baffles on, but no back. Here you can see the baffle, it's comprised of the quarter inch MDF and the 3 8 Baltic Birch. This is so I can machine the MDF really well for the woofer cutout, and uh, the Baltic Birch is stiffer than the MDF and gives the screw some more bite for when I install the drivers. And I had the materials. Here I am flush trimming those baffles off. This is the beauty of sandwich construction is you can just leave everything um, you know, a little bit oversized and then flush trim it off for perfect fit later. I did all this with scrap material I had laying around too. I didn't want to invest too much money in these desktop speakers because the market is ripe with very inexpensive speakers like that. Now here I am just um, taking a sliver off the back panel because as I mentioned little inconsistencies and things like that can become a problem. Um, but uh, most, most of the panels were good but in one of the speakers you can see the brace was a little bit proud so doing this helped with that. I then use a block sand to really dial things in nice and flush. Just gotta nip that off. You can see the brace is just butchered. I got some air holes in there and took that little piece out with a drill kind of on an angle. And uh, oh the back is 3 8 Baltic Birch as well. Again I was making do with materials I had available and um, I think Baltic Birch is a good material, so that's what I used. And uh, I clamped these on. Didn't need to bother firing up the compressor again, I figured, so this is just as good. And here I flush trim off the back panel. I'm going to put some grills on these. I'm going to hide the grills underneath the laminate. So here I'm just uh, marking off three quarters of an inch off of each uh, side and top and bottom. Uh, to give me locations of where the magnets will go and then I drill out the holes with the drill and uh, insert the magnet later. That's way too big of a drill. Perfect. Do that to all four corners. So it got a little late and dark, and so I didn't video it, but I drilled out each of those holes on all four corners, popped in the magnets, and then bonded them, and I'm gonna sand that flush. And uh, it's important to get all the magnets the right polarity. So, you know, as I was going, I was just checking to make sure I have, despite my best in intentions, I have done this before, when the mag one of the magnets gets flipped while you know pushing the bondo in or something and then oh man what a, it's such a pain to deal with it worked out they're all the right polarity and i can make grills for these later which i'm not going to do right now but later i am i do have that ability and no one will see these the laminate will cover it up yeah i'm just gonna sand everything i'm gonna hit it hard with a random orbit sander first just to knock off the heavy stuff and then i block sand it to really finesse things I feel like I don't see many people block sanding, but really, I mean, that's the best way to get a truly flat and square box. Here I am just taking the, uh, this is leftover laminates I had from another project, and I really like it, and I wanted to use it. Um, and I had just the right amount for this project, so here I am breaking it down into the um, rough sizes I need. Uh, I didn't get too carried away with trying to grain match as I wrap around the box because these were leftovers so um, I really couldn't be that picky for one. Um, uh, here I am applying contact cement. I have a video on this, it wasn't a very popular video, very few views on it, but um, I have a video of me going through this exactly on a much more interesting build. Um, so I'm just going to skip through this fairly quickly, but here's the first piece going on. This is the bottoms. I always go bottom, back, sides, top, baffle. I use a roller once I get going. And here goes the baffles. I kind of screwed up the baffles. They're a little bit cockeyed, but thankfully they're mirrored. Like they're both, you know, slanted um, opposite to each other, so that's good. The baffle pieces were so long that I wanted to trim them off and I use the bandsaw. If you do this, be very careful though, the laminate can chip 
and it'll make an absolute mess of your work. At this point, the boxes are fully laminated. But there's no woofer or terminal hole, or tweeter hole for that matter. So, I have this really crappy CNC machine here, but because it's really crappy, it won't fit under the Z carriage. Now, if it was just a regular woofer with a circle for a hole, I would go ahead and use my router with a jig of some kind, but this woofer has a rather difficult frame to flush mount. In my case, I do have the CNC and it is capable enough to create a template for me. So this is the template I've come up with. The woofer fits pretty good in there and so does the tweeter. So I'm gonna go ahead and double stick tape this onto the front of these speakers and then use a pattern rubber bit to take out the, the hole that I need. This is the rudder bit I'm gonna use. It's a down cut pattern bit, which is perfect for this application. I don't want to up cut because it could peel off that laminate if I'm not careful. It'd be unlikely, but you know, it could get chips. Um, so here I am making that. Uh, 122 millimeters is overall di diameter. So I need a radius of 61. Yeah, something doesn't seem right there. 122 millimeters divided by two is 61. Because that is not my circle. Well, maybe it is. And it was. <laughs> Sometimes things are deceiving like that. So I marked out the circle with a compass and then used the jigsaw and a Forstner bit on the tweeter, which I wasn't exactly centered, so I don't show it, but I used a, um, a rasp file to just open that hole up a little bit so the tweeter will actually sit centered. Then I vacuum out the box, get all the chips out of there and everything, because I'm now at a point where I can finally see, reveal these beauties. I pull off the protective film, off the laminate. Um, this is more work than it looks. I had such a pain, this stuff. And then I, this is a lot of work. I file the edges to get real nice and close and get off any extra contact cement residue or anything like that. And uh, make sure they're looking nice and pretty all around on every edge, nice and smooth. Tons of work, I hated this part. I feel like you're bound to make a mistake on every build. And this one just so happens to be my file slipped and I nicked the front of the baffle. Of all the mistakes you can make, that's just the worst. No way to fix that or cover that. I'm stuck living with that. Thankfully, I have grills planned for these and I will just have to see what I can do about buffing that, may maybe being able to make it look less noticeable, uh, like swiping some darker colored stain in there or something to kind of try to trick the eye. Ah, that's how it goes. So I'm done. Uh, next I can carry on with the series. I can load the drivers. I didn't uh, put a terminal plate in yet because I'm going to decide that later on. And for testing I'll leave it as is. Okay, there you have it guys. Don't forget you can follow me on Instagram impulse underscore audio and you can see upcoming projects and photos of things I'm doing that may or may not make it here on this channel. If you want to follow along and see more of these videos in this series, you can subscribe here to make sure you don't miss any. And I'll also put a link to the video on my XM tutorial here because that could be useful for the upcoming parts of this series. Thanks guys, catch you later.